This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Welcome to Body Count, the history podcast that covers death, destruction, genocide, and all of history's little miracles. Now your hosts, Jessica Burning Manor and Bethany the Skellington Skelton. Jingle balls, jingle balls, jingle all the way. All right, you stocking stuffers. Today's support for Body Count Big Heads Media comes from Manscaped.com, the best in men's below-the-belt grooming. You heard me right, Manscaped, precision tools for your family jewels. Oh, what fun it is to ride a precision Manscaped sleigh. Gentlemen, take it from me. When you're relaxing, maybe hitting the eggnog this Christmas season, that special someone doesn't want to look for your gift under an untrimmed tree. Unruly holly bushes are a thing of the past. Look no further than Manscaped's Lawnmower 2.0 with proprietary advanced skin safe technology. This trimmer won't nick or snag your chestnuts. Nothing makes under the mistletoe more awkward than using your face trimmer downtown. Don't forget to grab Manscaped's Crop Preserver. An anti-chafing, moisturizing deodorant for your chestnuts means cozying up near the open fire with complete confidence. You'll be ready to sit in any lap this season. Give yourself, your friends, your family, or that special someone in your life the perfect package this holiday season. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code BIGHEADS, that's all caps, BIGHEADS at manscaped.com. Ladies, tis the season to stop hinting he trim the tree and get proactive. Treat both of you with a gift that keeps on giving the whole year round at manscaped.com. Give the perfect package this holiday season with our special code BIGHEADS for 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Now, to the show. Here we are, talking about <laughs> Romanovs again. I Bethany got is trying to home from vacation drive. Got yes. her in the car. <laughs> we are. We are in the car. Um, we are actually going through, I think, Birmingham right now. So. <laughs> oh, what fun. Oh, what oh fun. super fun. Yeah. Bethany's coming off of an HO. I'm getting sick. My family is sick. But here we are <laughs> talking about Russian here. history. Rapping about Russia. I mean, what else? Rap, would rapping we be about doing? Russia. Uh, <laughs> I like that. I feel like that should be our thing. We're gonna rap about Russia. It should be, shouldn't it? Oh, yes. God, I swear it's been our thing. We're gonna try to get through this one. It may end up being a two-parter. I just don't know. We know how these yeah. things go with us. Yes, exactly. Um, you've got a sick kid at home, and I've got my husband next to me too. So it'll be this will be a fun and for once I'm not drinking for this podcast episode. Nor am I. Oh so. yay, we're both gonna be super sober, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> right. It's gonna be it's gonna be an adventure. We're gonna see how it goes. What I love is we've been so invested in time travel talks on Twitter. <laughs> Yeah. on behalf of the body count and I feel like we're going to have a bunch of new listeners and everything and they think that they're getting themselves and in my into my concise historical study maybe because I don't act like an a clown that's another thing we're going to do I'm going to get to that we I don't act like an a clown on on those talks and then all these people fall and they're like what is this podcast why why are you doing this? Oh, uh, like, uh, I thought she was like smart and sophisticated and said she hangs around with somebody that has no idea what they're doing. I thought it was more <laughs> and- like instead she gets on air and acts like an A clown, which brings us to another point. A yes. lot of people that started out really all gung ho about our podcast have complained some about the crudeness of our language recently and we're going to try to clean it up so we're going to play another game while we uh tell the story today if either of us hears the other one curse we have to yell curse curse Curse. and stop it so there could be some really interesting non-swear swear words that come out in the course of today 
Or we're we're going to be making up new hateful ways to say things about people. So I'm excited okay. about that. I like to we're be gonna creative. We're going to try our best. <laughs> we like to be creative. We're going to try our best. I can't promise a good solid F word isn't going to slip out, though, as we go through this. Because it is F-bomb worthy. Yeah, oh, I can't wait. Because you know how me and how ramped up I get with this kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, you're going to be ramping. Let me go ahead and tell you. But really quickly, let's go Disclaimer. ahead and do our intro. Then we'll mm-hmm. get back to our chatter. So here it goes. The whole spiel I give week after week. You think I'd be better at it and more prepared. I'm not. No. Ahem, ahem, ahem. 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 Uh, tip of the tongue. Tip of the tongue. Okay, here we go. <laughs> gonna laugh before I even do it that's not gonna help us okay I'm gonna stay quiet so you got this I got this hello and welcome to body count the podcast where we believe history doesn't repeat itself it rhymes and a proud member of the big heads podcast network we're here to show you you don't hate history you just hate the way it was taught to you only rule when we choose a topic someone or as is usually the case a lot of someone died we give you the series of events in a narrative fashion and by the end correlate said story with current events that being said i'm not pbs ken burns or dan carlin if you want to hoover us just the facts ma'am history podcast we're not going to be for you i.e there will be analysis and opinions my opinions are my own know that i hold my co-host verbally hostage direct your hate at me where it belongs it said tragedy plus time equals comedy No, we giggle at some occasionally rough subject matter. We are not actively trying to offend anyone. You've been duly warned. If you're okay with all of that, I'm your host, Jessica Manor, and I'm joined today by my co-host, Bethany Skelton. I'm actually really proud of you, Jessica. That was one of the best intros yet. (laughs) Got through it. Yeah, you did. The lack of drink probably helps. That does, you know, (laughs) maybe slightly. (laughs) <laughs> it probably does. It makes for a much smoother reading when you're not actively trying to squint and figure out the English language because you've forgotten <laughs> it due to drink. That's because usually that's because we usually have several drinks beforehand before we even start recording. <laughs> yeah, we like to pre-game record, but we're not doing yeah. that this week. We're no. both sober as. Michael Romanov's nun Martha mother. Uh. <laughs> oh, Martha. Martha. You. <laughs> bit how I mean, I'm sorry. Curse. Dang it. Curse. 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 <laughs> this is going to be it. fun. We're not okay. going to get this. This is going to be the worst. Like, oh. because we'll be mid story, start screaming, curse, curse at each I other. Know. Oh. <sighs> it's going to be fun. As okay. usual, a lot to get to today. More yes. than usual to get to today. First, mm. housekeeping. We are a part yep. of the Big Heads Podcast Network, which is a great collection of podcasts. Please go check it out. We're super excited. You can find them on social media. You can also find them at bigheadsmedia.com. Listen to all of the podcasts there. If you love the show, please, please go and give us those five stars on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. Say whatever the hell you want, but do make us, you know, feel good. Just kidding. We do feel good with all the love that we get in that. Please do write a review. It helps us out very much on the business end. Oh, now, am I done with the formalities? I think I am. Yes. You sounded extremely professional just then, Jessica. It's amazing what sobriety will do for your <laughs> for your radio speech. presentation oh. and your speech. <laughs> oh god. Uh, the tip of the tongue, the tip of the tongue. Ostrich yeah, because has oddly shaped feet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think of the Johnny Carson bit with the clean, clean copper clappers that were kept in the closet. And I just keep saying that in my head. Oh, nice. <laughs> you know, it is what we can do. Nothing like late night 
for all of those that don't even know who Johnny Carson was and weren't alive to remember. So dating ourselves a little bit there. Just That's a little exciting. bit there. Mm-hmm. That's what I love to do. Love yes. it so much. <laughs> all right. Are we ready to get into this? I yeah. I am excited. I am excited, everybody. I just I I'm know what's coming. I'm so excited. And I have no idea. So I am excited. <laughs> <laughs> I worked on this way too long. I can't even imagine that any of this outline is going to make sense by the end of it. So oh, okay. I'm very excited to see where we go because it could very well end up being just entirely from memory out of my crazy head. We don't. Well, know. I'm here for it. I'm here for the ride. Literally. Literally. And literally. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Where did, Boy, where did, our, our lackluster enthusiasm when we're not drinking for a podcast is just... It's sad. It really is sad. Basically, this podcast has turned into a reason for you and I to drink together from afar. But today's yes. going to be a, a, all about the history. We'll, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll um, see. <laughs> when we last left off in our story, mm-hmm. Michael Romanov had cried himself to death. Uh, <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> it's always funny how you want to. It's always funny how you want to start true. out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just too funny. When we last left off, Michael Romanov had cried himself to death. <laughs> uh, I'm also gonna really quickly. We'll start it again with that exact sentence it's so good it must be repeated thrice but i will say there are so many russian names in this episode forgive me as i butcher them all horribly and pause like a novice to decide yeah sure that may be how you say that hey (laughs) all i know all i know is you'll say it a lot better than i will with my country talk slang (laughs) you are hearing my voice right now correct there is no correcting this accent it just is what it is it is what it is (laughs) okay take two it's starting this all right last left off michael romanoff had cried himself to death (laughs) (laughs) his leaves Alexi to bury daddy. And again, we're not talking about like not that kind. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. Blah, daddies. So on July 14th, 1645, Alexi buries Michael Romanoff. Now, all of Moscow is like super nervous as hell because it <laughs> hasn't <nervous>. been. <laughs> McNervous. McNervous. <laughs> It hasn't been a smooth handover of power in in Russia in over 60 years yeah. since before the time of troubles really kicked off even. Which that was the only good start to it. And then it until Michael Romanov came into the picture, it was one hell of a rod. Yeah, it was. And we're getting back on on that crazy one hell of a ride train. This crazy week train. Yeah, we're getting on the crazy train again. So I like all, to see. Yeah, all the calmness is gone. Going to be a lot of lot of bodies dropping in this episode. So Yay. basically, the Russians need to pop a crown on it ASAP. ASAP. <laughs> um, Typhus is making its merry, pleggy way around Russia. The Tatar Khan <laughs> in the south is making a play, naturally, as they always mm-hmm. do. And then uh, the Poles are firing up and talking some mad... Uh, Crap. Crap. Poop. Lots of S- crap. Dash, dash, dash. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, basically, it's just business as usual in Russia. Yeah. The shadow I mean, of the troubles is looming large. Yeah. I mean, that's it sounds about typical hashtag Russia at this point already. So <laughs> typical. It's so, wearing me out. I'm so ready to be done with it because it's physically taxing to even think about the amount of purging these people like getting up to. Yeah. Ooh. Unfollow. Times Unfollow. a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm done with you. <laughs> and I'm done. Oh, oh shoot. <laughs> Takes us to the 28th of September of 1645. Alexei is crowned czar. 
I'm like, man, does he look the part. This guy's tall. Really? Yeah, he's tall. He's built. He's this ball of energy, healthy, even has a red beard. So he's basically oh. Thor. I'm describing like Thor. mythological <laughs> Thor. Not like Hemsworth Thor, but no, the no, one no. straight out of the Ken- Scandinavian tales, you know? Yes. Yeah. He, big, I bet it, tons of muscles. Like, maybe he will end up being a hashtag daddy later on. <laughs> he does. And then you read about the things that he does and no hashtag daddy. Hashtag too. daddy. But as oh, of okay. right now... Hashtag daddy, for sure. Um, and he, he really imposed himself on the court in a way that Michael Romanoff never could have managed. But then again, Alexei was also fully prepared to be czar. He didn't right. have it sprung on him like Michael no, did. He didn't wake up uh, two days, uh, you know, two weeks later, get a message with, on his phone letting him know he became czar back you know he's been czar for several weeks like dude where are you (laughs) and he's got to get past all the land pirates it's crazy it's just crazy well we don't have that alexi 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 has basically been trained to know it feels like kind of like edward like he you know back in that in that whole aspect like he knew what was coming exactly yeah and unlike edward we're gonna find alexi was not gonna give it up at all well, so, okay. well, yeah, you know, wouldn't be Russian history if somebody would just abdicate. Nope, that's not right. how it works. Nope. You're czar or you die. And there's yep. only one way out. Death. So, death. Alexi's <laughs> death. Death. <laughs> Alexi's a dead, clever MFer. Um, he's oh. always moving forward. He also has a mouth on him. He he didn't suffer fools very easily. You can correct or not at all to Tsar Alexei Romanov. Oh. Yeah, he wrote poems, sketched, was always jotting ideas down on every subject under the sun. And Alexei was all about technology and advancement. All about that Western tech and tax- mm. tactics to, you know, improve everything from basic archite- architecture to, to the army itself. So oh, I found that I mean- interesting. I, I think that is cool because, you know, a lot of the czars beforehand weren't very, I don't know, educated. Is that the mm-hmm. right word? You know, but he had, word. he had all the, you know, people for him. Basically, his dad made sure that when it was his time, not only was he going to know how to be a czar or, you know, uh, do the czar stuff, but this man is also going to not be taken for no fool. Exactly. So. Michael really did set Alexi up for success. success. Yeah. Now, all that being said, Alexi is sort of the polar opposite of Michael because, man, does he have a temper and his rages uh, were very, very dangerous. This is a guy known to, like, maybe knock a minister out if they got fresh in the middle of a council meeting. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, just get up just and go, glass I mean, someone curse. in the face. Oh, no. Sorry. Curse. 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 Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like you'd be like you backhanding people left and right for just sneezing the wrong way. <laughs> that is a very accurate assessment, actually. That's exactly what was happening. Oh, shoot. That being said, for all that he could be cruel, he could also at times be extremely, te- you know, tender and caring. He tempered a lot of his reactions according to whatever the fen- the offense may have, have been, which was also kind of new among autocrats. You know, right. he didn't behead somebody for talking crap to him versus somebody that attempted treason. It just wasn't off with their head automatically. Automatically. He thought okay. about it. Yeah. He thought about it, just didn't follow through with it, which is kind of cool, I guess, in a way. Yeah. And then he starts following through with some of it. Oh, uh, well. Ooh. Yeah, but we got, we'll get there. Now, still, though, it's important to remember, Alexei was the autocratic, God bless, czar of Russia. If he wasn't always a Dickensian, yeah, there we go. That's... He wasn't always a real Richard Noggin. He enjoyed being the playful tormentor 
protector of his courtiers. No one was ever for a second under the impression that Alexei Romanov wasn't the czar. Mm-hmm. Um, he kept a real crazy sketch, too, and he was pious AF, largely in response to how crazy society had really gotten. Visiting mm. dignitaries were going out of their way to write about the drunk people passed out everywhere to, like, well-known love of sodomy practice in the streets. Oh, my God. Moscow. <laughs> oh, what? Yeah. It was just, you're taking a leisurely stroll and people are just there having too. butt sex out in the open yep. like that. Two poor oh, my people God. Just, <laughs> just having out whatever they felt like. Oh, my God. That is hilarious. Again, when you think (laughs) Russia hasn't evolved, remind yourself of that. Oh, right. (laughs) Now, a bunch of pious pollies uh, really encouraged (laughs) Alexei to... I I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. I blurted it out, and I knew you would. So, a bunch (laughs) of pious pollies encouraged Alexei to lead a campaign of moral regeneration, which... I'm no fan of this kind of stuff historically and in general, but in this case, I think a little restraint was maybe called for. Maybe just you know, with all the what's happening in the streets of of their uh, town. <laughs> I'm gonna call it a town. You know, everybody's <laughs> just out, passed out in the street, face down, pull their own body up. <laughs> with their a up in the air ready for action <laughs> ready, ready to be whatever happens there now the troubles were God. over and for 60 years distraction had been warranted but now maybe it was time to kind of steer us all back to the middle N- none mm-hmm. of that maybe in the street but alexi might have gone a little bit too far with a strict ban on musical instruments, smoking, swearing, drinking, sexual immorality. Oh, all the fun ones, really. And all of this got him the nickname of the young monk. Wait, now, wait. So you said he banned musical instruments? Yeah, because music's going to lead to dancing, which is going to lead oh. to drinking, which is going to lead to fornicating. Basically, he went full Southern Baptist on it. It's super funny that we are trying to not curse in this episode, and we're talking about how Alexi put a ban on smoking, swearing, drinking, and all of that in between. (laughs) This episode is very much in honor of Alexi. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, right. If we were in a position, uh, travel or health-wise, to be doing anything else, we'd be giving this the true old Russian vodka dr- justice, and we both know it, yeah. like 110%. Yes. Okay, and so we're going to start here. into our weird names. <laughs> here, 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 here. Alexei also immediately retired his father's minister, Shermatev, and replaced him with his tutor, Boris Morozov. Now, remember him from the last episode? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes, so I do. Morozov gets to be the head of tons of uh, stuff from tax collecting (laughs) to I don't know head musketeer all kinds of things (laughs) so the first thing (laughs) Morozov sorry (laughs) you went from like taxes to being the original OG musketeer I just can't right now with you (laughs) D'Artagnan can suck it Um, so the first thing that Morozov does holds a bride show of course it would not be Romanov history if we did not have a bride show (laughs) Would it be, though? It really wouldn't. No. It, it went looking back on my notes the other day, like every other page was like, and bride show again. <laughs> bride show again. <laughs> Another bride show. Oh, God. I think didn't they have two bride shows back to back because he wasn't happy with what the the one that he got? 
right? I oh, can't really yeah. We're going to have part. some more fun bride show stuff <sighs> to get to. Hold on a second. Viewers, you're so lucky. Or viewers, listeners, you're so lucky. I am currently applying Vicks Vapor Rub to myself <laughs> and my child. Whoa. Nothing says wellness like Vicks Vapor Rub. <laughs> We're such old people. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're a thousand. I mean, who even in the younger generation knows what VIX is? They're just all uh, getting on their doctor on demand apps and having a go. Not us. We're old school. Hot toddies and VIX school. vapor rub. Cheer, oh, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> so, Morozov wanted the winner to be one of two daughters of his Morozov's protege. So that there's Morozov, he's got this protege he's bringing up in the court. Now that protege has two daughters. The okay. idea was whichever girl the czar chose, Morozov could just marry the other and boom, now he's the czar's new brother-in-law. <laughs> but bride shows are always a bit of a risk and Alexei chose neither of those Ooh. girls. Mm -hmm. So the wedding was scheduled almost immediately after selection to stave off any poisoning attempts. Okay. But um, it was still possibly a little too late for that because at a public crowning ceremony pre-wedding, the girl uh -huh. fainted as soon as the crown touched her head. What? <sighs> of course, How? everybody gets like all Like she was just like nervous? Out. Like was I she figure, just nervous? I figure a lot of it is nervous. <laughs> nerves they're covered and swaddled from head to toe in clothes that can't be cooling and then you uh, pop 15 pounds of gold and gems on somebody's head um, i'd pass out okay. too right hey tell you that know? girl to not lock her knees when she's hey, staying <laughs> right don't lock them girl that that's 90 percent of the problem but there is also some motivation everybody also you know immediately gets antsy she's a witch she's barren oh. she's epileptic all that kind of stuff but i will beg you to remember that morozov's plans to get one of his picks chosen had been foiled so the crowning accident might have been chance but i'm gonna say most likely poison wait she died no she didn't die but she did pass out and remember you can't can't have somebody passing out in front of the public oh, and yeah. say, oh, and this possibly witch is now the Zarina. Oh, uh, remember, okay. if you got the least little bit weird, sick, it was over Anything. for you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, most likely, Morozov mm, did a little uh, Cusco's poison trick. If I have to, if I'm a betting woman, which I am. I'm going to bet on that. So either way, one long before Alexei suddenly encounters Morozov's choice in Morozov's apartment. And Alexei, Alexei's getting a little, little horned dogish at this time. So he's all about her. Yeah. Alexei marries Maria Miloslavsky. I believe sure. is how you say it. Miloslavsky. Miloslavsky. That's what I say, but okay. <laughs> so you're doing better Ilya, than me. <laughs> but we're already doing better. <laughs> yeah. Hope, yay. So she's the daughter of Ilya Miloslavsky. He marries this girl immediately. Mem remember that Miloslavsky is the protege of Morozov. Morozov. Now, yeah. The two, Maria and Alexei, waste no time jumping on the baby train. And Maria ultimately ends up actually being a prime choice, turns out five sons and eight oh, daughters. Holy crap. That's a lot of kiddos. Oh, especially oh. again in 16, in the 1640s. Like you're, you're just churning them out in a whole lifetime. And we're, we're going to get it back to this because that's all going to become interesting later okay. on. Now, not ten days after the Tsar's marriage to Maria, Morozov mm -hmm. at fifty-seven marries Maria's hot teenage sister Anna. Morozov uh. becomes the Tsar's brother-in-law. 
this poor girl. Aww. Because, and I, I'll remind everybody again, there were no hashtag daddies in the 1640s. This isn't 2019 sexy as hell 57. This is 1640 57. <laughs> Which is like, if in dog years, 85. <laughs> if the dog evolved into a dinosaur. <laughs> Rawr. Rawr. <laughs> so naturally, this girl's not having the best time. And not just because she was super sexy. The marriage wasn't obviously super happy, but it would ultimately end up saving Morozov's life mm. good for yeah. him good for him good for him because he starts acting a fool and there will be trouble in russia when people are acting a fool so morozov <laughs> had raised the salt tax like four times and he ran around telling all the people in the kingdom to tighten their belts for the good of mother, of mother russia the truth was he'd uh been dipping into the kitty from day one. Oh, of course. He's a true politician. <laughs> <laughs> if there ever was one. Because everybody starts to take notice. Morozov had inherited very little, but somehow he's the second richest boyer in the land and his cousin the fifth richest. Mm. So it wasn't long until Morozov was the most Hated man in Moscow. Because oh, no. remember, people needed salt to survive back then. You needed a preserving agent to to have to be able to even put meat on the table, literally. So this tax is just killing everybody. But the first that Alexei hears of any of this or has any trouble with it, he's on his way back from a, par- a prayer pilgrimage. Mm. He's then stopped in the street by an angry mob who offer him gifts of blood and salt to show that he's Uh-oh. safe. Think very think bread and salt. Very uh very Game of Thronesy. Only in this oh. case there's no red wedding. Basically oh, okay. they give him this stuff, show he's safe so that they can attempt to then seek a forced audience with the czar. Not something uh, you generally want to do, but Alexi no. was desperate times cool about it. Yeah. And desperate times call for desperate measures. That's so. exactly right. So this mob bring pleas to Alexi against his minister, starting with Morozov and his main man ally, Pleshchev, who was in charge of governing the city of Moscow itself. So he was like the mayor. Mayor. Okay. Yeah. 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 Then the protesters saw Plushchev and his retainers approaching, and they allow the czar to pass and turn their attention to Morozov's pet, Plushchev. Now, Plushchev has his armed guards beat a couple of people and imprisoned even more in the crowd. Therefore, no surprise that next morning, a mob had grown to most of Moscow, which greeted Mm. Alexei at the Red Staircase, looking for Morozov and his lackeys. Very next Mm. day. We can see we're going to have trouble. We're going to start the body count early. That trouble, (laughs) trouble, trouble, trouble. That trouble. So much trouble. So much trouble. So then the violence started as the crowd beat up boyers and demanded Morozov's boy Plishchev's head on a platter. The mob fell on Morozov's palace where they beat a steward to death, threw his oh. servants out of windows, and raided oh. his vaults and wine cellars. In fact, they had so much alcohol at their disposal that the mobs were literally bathing in it. <laughs> that sounds like a good time to me. <laughs> oh, we're going to figure out just how hard these people party. I think of Roger from American Dad. American Dad. It's not spring break until someone dies. Yeah, that's that's what these people are bringing. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Fun yeah. times. <laughs> Great. So they're bathing in the alcohol, drinking it. So now they're pissed and drunk. Oh, great. Good combo. In Russia. Yeah. yeah. So thrilling, <laughs> thrilling. Great combo there. We're super excited about it. The mobs then raided all of Morozov's cronies' palaces. Anybody mm-hmm. that was super in his pocket. 
So now they have even more alcohol. Oh, fun. Okay. Yeah. This is headed nowhere good. They no. catch the tax collector sick in bed. The crowd beat him, dragged him outside, stripped him naked, and then finished him off, beat him to death on a manure pile just there <laughs> right outside the door. <laughs> uh, then they're running around screaming, like, basically, you know, that's what you get for the salt tax, itch. This is what you get. <laughs> this is what you get. <laughs> You're going to die in a big pile of manure. <laughs> like, oh how much God. more insulting do you have to be? You've already beat the man, stripped him down. Just be kind. Lop off his head. But no, you're going to bludgeon to de- bludgeon him to death in a pile of, of poo. poo. And a poo pile. pile. Of poo. so then this mob's real fired up and they march on to the Terran palace looking for Morozov and the rest of his main men and Morozov the chicken chicken stuff (laughs) now he has scaredy cat scaredy (laughs) cat there we go there we go It feels weird. It feels very it does, weird to do this. It feels Jessica. very weird. Trust me, when we get to some things, it's really going to break. We're going to lose control. Um, right now, this is tame. We've only got people thrown out of windows and beat to death in the street. Uh, so only, only dying in only. big piles of manure. <laughs> and what comes later, that is just fun and games. That's a party trick in Moscow. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean... You That's think jumping m- out of cakes is a, a party trick? Nope. <laughs> they did in it Moscow better in Russia. 1640, <laughs> pinatas are just humans that you don't like. <laughs> it's funny because I can actually picture them doing that. Oh, yes. I can, too. I can picture that for today. I'm sorry, Russia. I shouldn't say these terrible things about you. But I said it, and I don't probably take it back. I don't know. We'll see yeah. how I feel in 10 minutes. So again, <laughs> Morozov's a big chicken. He escapes the Kremlin. This leaves Nikita Romanov, the Tsar's very popular cousin, to wander out and address the angry crowd like he's John Wayne Western style in it. <laughs> and, and just straight up promises that the abuses would be punished. Now, at this point, the people bless the Tsar and Nikita, but they say, nope, nope. We aren't leaving without Morozov and his henchmen. So then Nikita's like, oh, well, we don't know where Morozov is. And they said, fine, just give us Mayor Corrupty Pants Plushie. <laughs> <sighs> Which, good to his word, Alexei gives Plushie up at which point the good people of Moscow beat him, quote, until his brain splattered his face. Oh, my God. Right? They uh, stripped damn. the body naked, drug it of through course. the marketplace, and then a monk, a monk of all things, that's how hardcore these people are, chopped the head off of the corpse. Oh, shit. I mean, shoot. Sorry. That kind curse, of... Curse, curse, curse. I wasn't actually <laughs> prepared for that one. Oh, man. I know. You can't be prepared for all the things that are coming. That's just metal AF. Russia is just... uh, Because at this point, after all that happens, this whole scene turns into this massive party in Moscow. Okay. (laughs) Nothing like a good human pinata and then a party. What can we say? Yes. Well, hi, um. (laughs) <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna say cheers but that's way better <laughs> you know it is what it is but then again why not throw a party because remember they have all this free looted alcohol mm-hmm. uh, so Morozov manages to sneak back into the Kremlin as you couldn't escape mm. the city at this current point in time city is closed um, but Morozov returned just in time to see Alexei appoint Nikita Romanov and one of his father's old ministers and also another cousin, Prince Cherkesky, as his current, you know, HBICs, for lack of a better term. I don't know what that is. Head B-word in charge. 
Oh. Oh, okay. I was just gonna say pot his posse. Okay, his I'm gonna allow a curse. His head bitch is in charge. Okay, okay. <laughs> I I really didn't know what that was. I was like, um, what? What? <laughs> What are you even talking about? So, now you've got the hated minister removed and two guys that are super popular put in their place. This really ramps up Moscow's, you know, mob pillage party to an 11. They are spinal tapping it. They were were at a 10. Let's bring it up to an 11. Because now they're excited and not just pissed. They're excited, pissed, and just drunk. Nothing good. So everyone, yeah. of course, is getting all crazy on their looted liquor. It's like a full-scale party in Moscow. And for some reason, they start lighting fires. Oh, God. Of course. Yeah. Of course. What do you think happened? Oh, I don't know. An entire wooden city burns. <sighs> <sighs> because everything's made out of wood. So, <laughs> you know. Can I just say, though, as a side note, and I'm not saying that right now I would advocate it, but this seems like a hell of a party. I mean, I wouldn't actually mind getting a chance to see it, you know? It's like it's like season two of True Blood, the way these people are partying right now. Uh, right? For real. <laughs> they might as well have a main ad in their midst. They're just going full tilt crazy. But I wish that I could say that's where it stops getting crazy. But this is just the beginning of crazy in this actual story. No kidding. Uh, So then the fire is spreading around the city. The city's burning. Crowd still doesn't care. It starts getting even crazier and and improving, I guess, at this point. Because they find Plischief's head, soak it in vodka, and light it on fire. Wow. That's Uh, fun. That's fun. So they also throw the mangled body and bodies of all of his headless corpse allies that are now lining the streets into the flames along with everything else. Awesome. Yay. Now we have this burning smell of human flesh. What else could we go in more into? What? What is better for a party than Than singed hair and flesh? Yes. (laughs) Mm. Mm, I, maybe I'm taken back. I don't know, though. I still might attend this party just to say, like, I was there. I was there. So I saw it. The, it's I true. saw it. <laughs> I watched it happen. It was I, wild. I did. I didn't partake, but I saw it. <laughs> I saw it. The, he, the Hadids are, like, Instagramming all about it right now. You don't right. want to miss it. Kendall yeah, Jenner I think, posted I think, something. I think she was there. It was uh, It was awesome. Um, yeah, it's at this point in the history, in history, that English Parliament is trying, planning to behead an anointed king. So there was nothing populist about Alexei's laws. This is exactly what Alexei wants to prevent in his own country. Yeah. Now, essentially, all of this is being drafted to consolidate the power of autocracy. Things are unstable yeah. and fear is rife in the kingdom. Alexei uses this moment to consolidate his legitimacy and align himself with his nobles in an agreement that would be the foundation of the Romanov dynasty until 1861. So okay. big laws we're talking about here. Yeah, like, like actual like, long-term future-esque yeah, all of that. You yeah. know, just handing down the crap to the next generation. So Alexei grants his nobles land, which became, you know, permanent holdings ultimately. And justice for the peasants would now fell under the jurisdiction of these landholders, i.e. the peasants were their problem now. Don't make yeah. me come deal with your peasants. I'm giving you all this so that you make sure this never happens again, again. jerkwads. 
Exactly. In essence, yeah. this makes the serfs the absolute property of the nobility. There was no leaving. If you did try to leave, you'd be hunted down. So uprisings were kind of stemmed for the time being, understandably. Okay. Right. Furthermore, the death penalty under these laws now included punishments like burying alive and burning alive. And it was imposed for up to 63 crimes where before it hadn't been all that many. And in return for Alexei being able to freely ask for military mobilization at any time from his nobility, which kind of assures the autocracy overall, he gave the nobility absolute control of the 90% of the population peasantry. Mm. So at this point, really in our story that, and this is why it matters to today, that we see this enduring pattern of behavior in Russia really begin to emerge. Nobility basically owning other human beings in the name yes. of the czar. Servility at the top, tyranny to tyranny. those at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. So now we got through all that boring part. Let's let's get back to the story story. Ooh. Now that we all have just like snail trails of sand dragging behind us from the boringness yeah. of those facts. Let's get to the good stuff. So okay. Alexei feels secure enough to fire all of his ministers he's just appointed and set up his father-in-law, Miloslavsky, with a place of some importance. Now, Miloslavsky was described as a creepy sex pest with his hands <laughs> always in the coffers. I don't think I know what that means. A creepy, like a, a weird, you know, not kink shaming or anything, but like just definitely a sexual psycho deviant. Who knows what all he was getting okay. into? Just like not a great guy. Plus, he's always got his hand in the old royal coffers. But what I are you going to do? What coffers is. What's, what's that? Oh, mean? the treasury. Oh, hands in the cookie jar, that kind hands of thing. Hands okay. in the cookie jar. Mm, okay. And his hand in the kitty. It's for <laughs> this reason. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> nice word choice, babe. Nice word choice. Always. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> oh, shoot. Uh, that would have been so much more accidentally funny if we were intoxicated, okay. but here we are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lemons, lemonade, like we're beyond say um now what are you gonna do though if you're alexi this is your father-in-law that's kind of expected mm -hmm. he has this place of prominence but it's also for these reasons maybe that alexi gave all the real power to someone a little more impressive a very austere monk by the name of nikon and this guy was hardcore parkour um, <laughs> nice like real hard, real into the religious stuff. And uh, Alexei, the young monk, was all about it as yeah. Nikon was as much about the idea of sacred monarchy as Alexei was. Mm -hmm. um, which is going to, obviously, if you're a czar, that's really going to make you feel more secure in the decisions you're making and that you are, in fact, a God-anointed God-king, for lack of better words. Yes. Which, that much religious mumbo-jumbo coming together in a government, I think yeah. we all know that we're going to have some problems. Yeah. Anytime you start doing that, we're going to have some big old problems. Yeah. Now, we're going to talk about some things that definitely occurred during the rule of Alexei that are still gracing headlines right now to this day. So, kind of let's get into it a little bit. Now, okay. on the Polish borderlands of Ukraine, and again, this is going to sound familiar, there's this really wicked civil war breaking out. The Orthodox Christian peoples are battling the Polish Catholic, Catholic nobility for dominance. I'm sorry, I like how you stumbled over that word, but you are not drunk. <laughs> no, I'm not drunk. I'm just tongue-tied and sick and just trying to get this over with, or get to the good parts, if you <laughs> yeah, will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Less of these sandy snail trail parts. Um, this was very dangerous to the tenuous peace when you got Orthodox and Catholic firing up against each other because, mm -hmm. of course, 
Poland is Catholic and Russia is Orthodox. And both are pretty willing to go a pretty long way to defend their take on Christianity. Yeah, their religion. Yeah, go figure. Pretty much. Now, it's usually Nikon, how it happens. It's always how it happens. <laughs> the story of the world right now. Yeah. And then just, oh, yeah. Lord. So, of course, Nikon, who's this super into it monk guy, is all mm-hmm. about preaching the orthodox mission of the Russian czar. Nikon advocated a crusade against the Catholic Poles and the Islamic Tatars, mm-hmm. which are all hanging out down there in the Ukraine, supposedly oppressing all these orthodox believers. So we got yeah. the makings of quite a little problem. Nikon yeah. worked up fervor as Alexei, swayed by Nikon, began prepping for an army for his crusade. Oh, goodness. Okay. Crusade sure. is always an historical watch word, too. <sighs> it's just, yeah. Nothing good ever happens. Nothing. So, July 1652, Alexei names Nikon Patriarch of the Church, like Philarat Romanov before him, and Nikon mm. started to sign most of the Czar's decrees, as Alexei just couldn't be bothered right now. He's, right. he's off he's playing with his army. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> his toy soldiers. Die, die, bullet, bullet. <laughs> bullet, bullet. This is fun. I'm the Czar. Pew, 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 pew. I'm Czar. Listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Alexei believed he'd found the ultimate governmental advisor in Nikon, as well as somebody that could be the leader of his church. It's I at mean, this point, what, I, mean, I mean, I get it. I mean, look, look at it. Look at it. He believes in the same things he does. He is loyal to him. I mean, he's like, you know what, man? You got this. I've got other things. So I got to go count my money in the vault and play with my army because I'm czar. <laughs> exactly. He's all about going off and doing all the manly fun adventuring. Alexei, at this point in time, he's not very old. I think he's just 25. It's more like, mm-hmm. eh, I'm not exactly into the paperwork. Why don't you do it for me? Yeah. That's where we're at. So it's at this point that our story really starts to go off the rails and gets mm-hmm. uncomfortably purgy. Oh. Uh, of awesome. Course. Wouldn't be Russia if we weren't purging. So nope. Nikon went crazy purging the church, causing divides between the Orthodox believers and beginning a purge against foreign <laughs> citizens. No one in the story ever gets tired of purging. I don't Apparently. understand it. <laughs> Apparently. I mean, it's like been constant purging, I think, since we started <laughs> six, seven episodes ago. <laughs> That should be that should be the motto of this country. Um, yeah. you have to pur- we purge once a century. Uh, oh my every god. Every other week. No, it's more like every other <laughs> week we're gonna purge. <laughs> we're just gonna give it a little purge, a little purge action. Uh, so meanwhile, Alexi is still bringing in foreign military experts. Which is kind of adding to the general confusion because here we are supposed to not like foreigners or have foreigners, but yet the czar's bringing in all these foreign generals and then the religion's being torn apart. Uh, Nobody knows what's going on. Well, that's confusing. Yeah. And then in the midst of all of this, Ukraine just begins to tear at the seams in some kind of dystopic hellscape. And finally, (laughs) after all these years, a czar will be given the opportunity to redeem the lost lands of the Kievan Rus. I don't know what that is. um, Where where things really started, what used to be all together with the Muscovite Duchy, what used to include an entire nation was lost in the Middle Ages, lost parts of it in the Renaissance. Things really started to deteriorate in the time of Troubles, but now... He's going to be given a chance to get the Crimea and Ukraine back, which hot button issue for Russia, as we know. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a little bit of a detour, and it's going to be important why we do that. The Orthodox leader in Ukraine at the time was a Cossack named 
I believe it's Kilmitsky. <laughs> Uh, sure, that is not what it says, but okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, do you want me to pronounce it the way I think it should be? I was about to ask why. Why don't you give it a shot? Okay. <clears throat> Kahimin it sky. Kahimin sky. There we go. Oh, because it's K H, but I know that's you know. probably silent. So it's Kahimin Kahimin to no. See, I can't even do it. There's too many letters that don't belong. Kelmitsky. Oh, that's a, there's an L. I didn't even really. Kamel. Kamel Nitsky. Sure. I didn't realize there was that. <laughs> we can call him that, oh. too. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, shoot. <laughs> so, Kelmin or. Er, <laughs> now I'm and now I can't even. Oh man, Melnitsky, mm-hmm. who had served sure. the Ottoman Sultans, Polish kings, until he retires to a farm. But then a Catholic noble gravely wounds his ten-year-old son, and it was on like Donkey Kong. They chose oh, the they. wrong guy's kid, so he launches something known as the Great revolt there in ukraine but at the same time don't be thinking this guy is okay or that he's a hero no one in this entire story is really super great but this guy uh let's bear with us get to it um oh god now i'm gonna have to say it again and i've got you in my head saying it that way kilnitsky (laughs) And his rebels came after the Polish Catholics and surprise, surprise, the Jews that served oh, as no. agents for the Polish kings until, you know, it just basically all Polish nobles, magnates, the, the Jewish population really did a lot to serve them, carry out their orders. So while the pur- they purged the Catholic Poles, they also purged large Jewish communities who had found refuge in Poland and Ukraine after being violently persecuted and expelled from Spain and Western Europe in general. Wow. I feel kind of, you know what? The Jews have really had it rough, even before all that Hitler nonsense. That might be the greatest historical understatement of all all time. (laughs) I mean, dang, they cannot catch a break, can they? Oh, they cannot catch a break. They really, really cannot. Bless their peepick and heart. So, Kelnitsky <laughs> unleashes some crazy apocalyptic horsemen in a very Yvonne the Terrible move and went banana bonkers on the Catholic Poles and Jewish communities. Um, here's how <laughs> I like how you did that. Bonkers. Banana bonkers. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only, I was trying to think of nice ways to put what I really wanted to say. Somewhere yeah. between 20,000 and 100,000 Jews were massacred in these atrocities, like this Jesus. big carnival of atrocities. Uh, they were disemboweled, dismembered, and decapitated. Children were, oh God, culleted, roasted, and eaten in front of their <gasps> sexually assaulted mothers. Jesus. Yeah, nothing. Is nothing. that really necessary? Like, was that really, really necessary? Did they have to go that far? I mean, just murder the children and the women. You don't have to do all of that. Jesus. Uh, like, uh, hey, let uh, me rape you while you watch me cook your child and then eat it. Like, yeah. what? A big, oh, God. Doubly, I'm sure there were curses. Curses were in there. Curses. Oh, big, my uh, God. This is why oh. I met. This is why I said we're not going to keep it. We'll be able to keep it all out because it's I'm just going to so, pour oh out God. rage. This is Mortified. absolutely insane. Now yeah. I really wish I had a drink. Like <laughs> more than oh, anything. I feel very let uncomfortable me tell right you, now. It doesn't the story does not tone down after this. Of course so it doesn't. Nothing, nothing would be seen like this again in Eastern Europe until the Holocaust. Like mm-hmm. the Nazis were late to the game. Sorry. And I think I'd <laughs> prefer a gas chamber to 
What these poor people had done to him. No God. The Nazis were bad, man. They were nothing compared to this. Holy crap. Seriously, right. if I was a Genghis Jew, be like, Con- I'd rather be in the gas chamber than go through that. This. <laughs> you know, Genghis Khan seems like a pretty upstanding guy, doesn't yeah. he, everybody? He'd mm-hmm. just behead you and be done with it. This is what I meant. This is what I meant. Genghis Khan can't hold a lit candle to the atrocity. He was just very, very efficient. We're he looks like very godmother compared to this. <laughs> right? And Genghis Khan starts to look great. You know, you've really reached an historical turning point in a story. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. So... And what's worse is I'm actually holding back in my descriptions because some of them may be physically sick. But you're going to ask, what does any of this have to do with Russia and Alexei? We're going to get there. So Kilmitsky won the backing of the Khan of Crimea and his Tatar horsemen. They defeated the Polish armies in the region. So December 1648, Kilmitsky declares himself the Grand Prince of Rus. But that doesn't last long as his Crimean allies desert him and the Poles defeat him. So he turns in absolute desperation to find someone to continue to back his play. And in January 1654, he swears fidelity to Tsar Alexei Romanov, who in turn recognizes Kilmitsky's hetmanate, which is basically... Like, he's in charge of this this kingdom in the name of Russians. Now, okay. why do I include this? Here yes, why? For Russia. Why, Jessica? Why? Tell why? me why. Tell me well, why. Actually. Well, actually. <laughs> uh, this is the point in history for everybody out there that's like, what's going on in the Crimea? This is the point for Russia In this moment in time, that they believe Ukraine becomes theirs. Now, for the Ukrainians, this is the moment in time when Russia recognized their independence. Ooh, yikes. So, Uh, everything that's happened since then (laughs) stems from right here in January of 1654. And that is a big lack of miscommunication. (laughs) Centuries upon centuries of it. Uh And the truth is, this moment eventually would become very significant, especially when some decisions are made in the USSR. But at this time, it was just an expedient path of least resistance for Alexei to make the alliance in order to attack Poland and grabbing the UK, uh, Ukraine under his czar crown is a plus, right? Mm-hmm. Alexei's not thinking yeah. all of this. He's just thinking, all right, Ukraine is mine again. You know, like my yeah. crane. Um, my crane, not your crane. <laughs> not your crane. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's your crane? No, it's my crane. <laughs> oh, the level of our jokes is so cheesy oh, when we're not so drinking. Dad. Yeah, so no, dad. <laughs> not hashtag daddy. Again, these are the most non hashtag daddy episodes ever. Remember, Alexi's crusading. He didn't really have time for anything or any forethought but holy warring against Catholics. So yes. Kelnitsky pledged 20,000 Cossacks. And Alexei declared war on Poland in 1654. Now, before Alexei leaves, he gives Crazy Nikon the title of Great Sovereign, which was last held by Philaret Romanov. Mm -hmm. You could say that these two's relationship was a lot like Michael and Philaret's, except as we will come to see, Nikon is no Philaret Romanov. But we'll get to that later. Um, Mm -hmm. Alexei marches on, on Smolensk and showed some great military prowess as he racked up a victory. Oh, Alexei took, right, this hasn't happened yet in our story. A Polish war is thus far going successful. It hadn't <laughs> happened since Ivan the Terrible's earliest days. So Alexei took Smolensk and 30 other small, t- or 30 other, not small, but really important holdings. And the distance and experience gave him some time to kind of reflect on some of his decisions as czar thus far. 
Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, so he gets okay. a win. And so he's like, I need to reflect on my life. I need oh, to okay. think about my life. I've been <laughs> successful on my own. What am I doing in my country? Okay, maybe not the time, bro. I mean, he would always yeah. love Morozov, um, who he'd come to. Uh, he would he would love Morozov, but he knew that wasn't a great decision, and he would absolutely end up despising his father in law. Miloslavsky, and he begins to ask himself, literally out loud in front of everybody, how he could trust such two-faced men. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Meanwhile, everybody's like, just, man, I'm just trying to chill around the campfire and be cool on this balmy wartime night, and you're sitting here thinking aloud and making us all uncomfortable, but whatever. You're the czar. This is your show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Everybody laughs uncomfortably. (laughs) 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 I I don't know. You're so funny. I don't know how you could either. Uh, Ah, You're great. February 1657. Alexei is welcome back parading 60 Polish standards, which no one had managed to do since the early days of Yvonne the Terrible before he, you know, lost his marbles like Mm -hmm. he's the old guy in Hook. Um <laughs> so Alexei took note, however, as he found Nikon to be very domineering now that he was back at home for a little while. Kind of almost overstepping his bounds and power, messing with the czar himself. But still, for the time being, Alexei allowed him to remain great sovereign and go- sovereign as govern, you know, govern at home. He would rather just go back to war. He's not done mm-hmm. playing yet. This yeah. is a young he's guy. Too he's, he's having, having too, much, too fun. much fun. Like, and there's no doubt about it. I'm sure covering yourself in military glory is far more fun than, than signing papers and passing laws. Yes. Uh, Alexi is. He's just war partying too hard to stop and deal with whatever is rotten at home right now. So, further... Alexei captures Minsk, big portions of today's Ukraine, Belarus, and Lithuania. He's really racking up these victories against the Poles. Nothing lasts forever, Bethany. (laughs) Of course. Of course. Because Sweden perks up its little old ears and takes notes of all these victories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody's getting more than us. Mm -mm. Do one now? You could be our neighbors to the east and the south? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> We're not fans of that. So they uh, get a little worried about an ever-growing and strengthening uh, Russia. And, uh-oh, spaghetti The Swedes <laughs> take a dump on Alexei's war party <laughs> and invade. <laughs> I love how you put that. <laughs> they take a big old dump on your your war and part your war and party <laughs> right you think you're having a good time now yeah we're gonna stop that welcome yep, to the invasion welcome to the invasion <laughs> enjoy yourself so alexi should have made peace with the poles and then turned his attention to the swedes right. but nikon no, he and he doesn't he takes more bad advice nikon Insists Alexei attack the Swedes and worry about the Polish later. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. Remember, Alexei is apparently, like, taking a break from thinking and ruling. He's just here to fight now. So Alexei apparently. begins a two-front war, which everyone knows is just the worst idea ever in history when you're, like, party in war style. No yeah. two-front wars. Who does this mofo think he is napoleon like <laughs> who do you think you are who do you think you are oh now the swedes were a european power fresh from the little game of the 30 years war so they've been warring all this time they're feeling pretty good about war fun they're having more than alexi let's put it that way they're yeah. united they're powerful and they knew what the hell they were doing so Alexei automatically finds himself in a crazy quagmire. But what's (laughs) worse is the problem that is Nikon. 
he's now attempting to assert the superiority of the church patriarch over that of the czars. Ooh, no, no. No, 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 no. You don't do that. That, That's like the one thing you definitely don't do. That's going to go over like a steel ball being slammed into your face. Yeah. Okay. So it's at this point, and our story is nearing its end, but it's going to get pretty dicey because everything we're about to talk about is happening simultaneously, if that Uh makes sense. It's all all happening happening at the same time. Of course. And this story is now really going to start to get metal. We're going to get real old school with it. So, Nikon, yeah, right, great. Nikon has essentially torn the church in two. The people that follow orthodoxy as it has been practiced in Russia since Ivan the Terrible. Now, these people are known as the old believers are on Mm -hmm. one side, and the people that followed the Nikon line, that things should return to the way they were under a more Byzantine interpretation of the religion, are on the other side. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is address this internal religious struggle very first. Alexei had already followed the Nikon line. Like, he'd Mm -hmm. already committed to all of these things. And even though Nikon's on the outs, he, Alexei, had to kind of stick with all the changes that had been made. You can't just suddenly go back because you don't like a guy. He knows that. So he's kind of stuck with all of this. So he begins a purge of all of the old believers. Starving. Oh, own people. Torturing. Jesus. You know, <sighs> anybody in the court that was present that refused to change. So he starts all this. Now, the common men among the old believers, they were just burned alive for everybody to watch. Cool. Mm -hmm. Easy. Mm. Avakum, the leader of the old believers. (laughs) That's not how you say that, but. uh, But sure, we're going to call it that. We're going to call it that. (laughs) Um, This leader of the old believers was watched, forced to watch as his wife and children were buried alive in front of him for daring buried? to cross the czar buried alive buried alive oh my yeah. god yeah the worst right then Avacum and the remaining old believers were exiled to or fled to Cossack lands or to Siberia um specifically some mortified monasteries in the Arctic both both sets of these people kind of split up there and went their separate ways so they did that to this guy, and then he's like, and now I'm going to leave you alive to live with that vision forever. Alexi was good at torturing Damn. people. Man. So this metal. takes care of that. It is real metal. This takes care of that internal religious struggle for the moment. And Alexi's able to turn his attention to ridding himself of Nikon, who dares to say, I'm as important as the czar. Mm. Oh, so he basically what he did, it was like, yeah, I'm on your side. I'm on your side. Let me do all of this. And then I'm going to be like, nope. <clears throat> and now that that's all settled, bye. I don't need you anymore. Exactly. Bye. Yeah. These two start having open itch fights, basically, in church. And I obviously put a B in front of that. We're just trying to substitute cursing. So like yeah. open, hardcore itch fights in church. And uh, this wasn't lost on the boyers and nobles of the court. They Whoa. quickly lined themselves up to get rid of Nikon. And oh, okay, cool. Yeah, they're on Alexi's side, but they see the chink in the armor. And now they're going to do everything they can do to get rid of Captain Crazy, basically. So they had long been whispering among themselves about how insufferable and self-righteous Nikon was becoming because Nikon had changed from that simple monk that he started out. Yeah. He he had set up his own miniature version of a court. He was sporting jewel-encrusted robes that were so heavy he could hardly stand while wearing them. And then... On top of that, he's having like weird nun sex parties oh in, his, in his house. Yeah. Okay. 
you know, seriously, who does this guy think he is? Like Hugh Hefner, like of of the 1600s? Like, what the hell is this guy? Uh, the star of the <laughs> Devil of Louvain? I don't know. Like, what uh, like is for this real? guy's problem? Either <laughs> way, you get the picture of where we're going. It's like, what? You, you give a mouse a cookie, you know? You give a patriarch a palace. Here you go. You give a patriarch a palace, he's going to want some jewel-encrusted robes. <laughs> God. Story's so ridiculous. Um, it didn't take long for the tension, understandably, to reach a real breaking point. And Alexi didn't even tell Nikon in person that he was no longer the great sovereign. <laughs> he oh, sent someone else to do it in this <laughs> weird game of Russian, like, court whispers or telephone. You know, like, whispering <laughs> yeah, to the yeah. guy next to him and it goes down the chain. Hey, hey, tell, tell, so, hey, will you pass this to Peter? Tell Nick's Nikon he's not the great sovereign. Okay. Hey, Nikon is great sovereign like it gets gonna get messed up i was gonna up. say like, it's <laughs> gonna get all confused i'm sure that first he was like nikon is the donkey sovereign excuse me sir what what is what did you just say yeah I, i'm only gonna repeat myself once so uh pass it along um pass it along oh wait nikon has a big donkey ding dong i don't know <laughs> is that what he said <laughs> is that what he said is that what that was <laughs> oh. oh god whatever <laughs> however long it took for nikon to figure it out eventually mm -hmm. the news reached him so he tries mm -hmm. nikon tries to call alexi's bluff nikon oh my god i thought you still... meant i thought you were gonna say he tries to call him be like um excuse me just call me and <laughs> Don't do the stupid me. game of telephone. Could, could you tell the czar to pass it on down the line? <laughs> start his own game of telephone. <laughs> you tell him. <laughs> A bunch of vicious, like, descendants of, I, or of On the Terrible are playing telephone as to who's not king number two anymore. No. Um, again, so Nikon gets the point, but... He's going to try to call Alexis Bluff, and this is great. Nikon, still patriarch of the church, he puts on a big show mid-church service. He announces to the congregation of Moscow, while Alexei is posted up right in front, I can, and this is a quote, I can no longer be your shepherd. The great sovereign has violated his oath. I have to leave this temple and this city. Then, in front of the now scandalized congregation, Nikon takes off his uber expensive clothes and puts on a plain monk's cowl and stares at a at Alexi, waiting for him to be like embarrassed. I guess you know, like if you he's sitting there, he's made this big public scene, thinking that. Alexi's gonna give a crap about it and be like, "Oh no, I guess no, you can stay." I'm sorry, you can stay. I'm sorry, you poor thing. You poor guy. Yeah, right. Because everything we know of Alexi indicates that that's gonna happen. Huh. Yeah. Nope. Um, <laughs> no, it was it was the wrong move. Alexi just sits there, stony face not blinking and just stares at him basically saying well, like a get stare it. contest okay like he then totally <laughs> he booth powers that like or powers boost that like at the end of tombstone you know that well bye bye like, that's basically exactly what alexi did that's what i pictured in my head when i read this and i just laughed for an hour so i just can picture like a staring contest going on who blinks first <laughs> it's the loser and has to leave exactly <laughs> he's standing there in these inchy robes like everybody's staring at me while alexi's sitting there with the eyebrows eyebrow cocked to be like, okay you're embarrassing Bye. yourself but okay <laughs> you're embarrassing yourself god what are you my girlfriend get out of here <laughs> oh. oh shoot it's what nikon does he does leave and he should have stayed 
gone. But no, he tries to show back up, which stirs up trouble with all the new followers of Nikon's version of orthodoxy. So Alexei just has enough. Nikon has tried to pose this monarch and shipped off in permanent exile in oh, some wow. Siberian fortress. Yeah, what fun. So any internal rival to the czar is now eradicated. There are yeah. no more patriarchs. The church is just now an arm of the monarchy. So okay. the czar was able to say, like, the absolute sacred vessel of God in Russia. The autocracy is now more absolute than ever. So we've really cemented it. What with the laws? And now there are no more patriarchs. There are no There's more leaders of the church. The czar exactly. who rules over it all. Oh, okay. I mean, who is? Okay. What what is it that we always say? King shit of turd mountain. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. Curse, okay. curse, curse, curse. <laughs> uh, uh, so on top of all that, Alexei's kind of also returned from war a very different czar. He's kind of dropping that young monk routine. So I'm sure that made having Nikon around even more annoying. Mm -hmm. Alexei's gotten a glimpse of how the Polish lords were living. And he's slowly changing his mind on all that austere monkish nonsense. He starts mm -hmm. buying fun things, hosting fun events, taking actual pleasure and joy and stuff. Um, embellishing his palaces, he starts to live for the first time like a true king. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not all. It's not all bad either. He hires scientists and artisans to join the court. He brings some two thousand foreign officers in and is reforming the army further, incorporating even more new tech. Um, and now that he's rid of Nikon. Alexei decided every ruler needs to diversify when it comes to carrying out orders. And that okay. he needed a chancellery to carry out those orders. He creates the new office of secret affairs. And then he oh. starts doing some really weird. Shiznizzle. Uh, Shiznizzle. <laughs> Very nice. I like it. Shiznizzle. Like anyone. Anyone that might miss, like, a dawn church service was taken from their beds by this new super secret office. Their hands were tied behind their back, and they were just thrown into the river. Now, what? these boyers, yeah, yeah, what? these boyers could have frozen to death or drowned if they didn't make it back to shore under their own power. Yeah, and then, what's worse... Alexi would be standing there and saying things like, your reward for staying in bed, you know, with your wives when you should be celebrating the lesser of this blessed day. Really weird stuff Whoa. like this. Yeah. That sounds like cult-like stuff. Like, it yeah, really kind of does. that's basically <laughs> it. The cult of the czar. I mean, he's just running around on this campaign of weird bullying. He is. He's trying to start a cult with him at yeah. the center. Uh, it's it worked though. Oh. I, I can't disagree that it did work. Nothing says I'm the czar like controlling every aspect of his life. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, I would say that you're in power. I would say that you're in power if um you miss one church service and they come hunt you down tie you up and throw you in the river yeah next <laughs> like, thing you know you're playing marco polo with the secret police <laughs> marco polo marco well. marco <laughs> nope i guess no more polo they drowned that's what you get going <laughs> what <just> happened <laughs> I was just, man, I'm sick today. I can't be at church. We're all going to get sick. And we don't have the medicine for that. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. So he's playing these kind of weird mind games every hour of every day. Alexi put all the courtiers in their place every, every chance that he got. He was calling everyone out. Everybody is on constant pins and needles. Mm -hmm. After the Nikon debacle, no one at this point is ever going to forget who the czar actually is 
anytime soon. Anytime soon. So that's what I mean by it was ultimately effective. Weird, but effective. But effective. It Uh, worked. I mean, it did work. You're right. It was weird as hell, but it got people on board. (laughs) Or overboard. On board or or overboard. (laughs) <laughs> bad dad joke just saying that was awesome <laughs> God, we cannot be sober for this podcast now while all of this is going on at the same time as everything else remember we're in a tight spot still with the swedes and the polish oh yeah and things are looking forgot. yeah i kind of forgot going on while all of this is happening so things are looking pretty disastrous because uh, the Poles and the Swedes decided to make peace with each other. Oh, Turns no. out they could reconcile their differences long enough to tag team tag Russia. Tag team Russia. I knew it. Tag team it up. Tag team them. <laughs> tag me in, bro. Tag me in. I'll get them from the south. You get them from the north. Yeah. It's a big old Russia bad sandwich (laughs) so then to make things worse the cossacks and the totters that you know align themselves with alexi in the first place get a better deal offered to them by poland and they turn on him too so yeah oh surprise surprise so a polish cossack totter coalition routes alexi's army killed some 40 thousand russian men and he lost a whole bunch of his brand new real estate but alexi finally makes finally finally bethany makes a good choice and appoints a competent minister in Mm -hmm. nashokin because by this time he's done with people like morozov and his idiot father-in-law milislavsky alexi is seriously not fond of his wife's family by now. So Nashokin yeah. recommended not only a peace with Poland, but an alliance, if not a union. Now, while Nashokin is addressing the problems on the war front, things on the peasant front aren't going very well. No. So the this war when is it is, ever? When is it ever? This okay. war <laughs> is putting this massive amount of strain on the entire country and so then alexi's gonna have some serious issues to contend with at home while nashokin sorts out the war mess that nikon made Uh all of this stuff is happening at the same time that's what sounds like a big old pot of crazy stew Oh. And I feel like we've had some crazy stew before. <laughs> this is some real crazy stew. So we're going to cut to Alexei and his family in a church outside of Moscow. Another mob surrounds the palace. Pisses all get out. The crowd is calling for the head of Alexei's idiot father-in-law, Miloslavsky, who Alexei allowed to be, for whatever reason, the treasury boss. But yet he didn't so, like him. Yeah. No, but yeah, I, mean, you're gonna I think make he him? loved his wife and she gave him a whole bunch of kids. He's trying to be cool. Like it or not, this family is now his family, you know, kind of thing. What are, what are, what's a young czar to do? So this idiot, Miloslavsky, had devalued the currency with copper. So money's oh. now worth a lot less. Oh, no. You know, because back then they counted on being able to actually melt down the coins or to trade the coin. It was based on a gold standard. Uh Nobody had faith in a currency, a global currency. yet. You know, that didn't exist. So Alexei tried to reason with the crowd while trying to summon reinforcements from Moscow. Not but, yet aware that Moscow's also in revolt. Yeah. Yeah. He did. Of course he didn't know. Okay. <sighs> Then things get really weird. Alexei's then accosted as he tries to make his way back to Moscow. Big oh. mistake. Big yeah. mistake by this mob. He was manhandled, but his retainers fell on the crowds with extreme prejudice. Many were slaughtered. 
Um, but I'm going to say if you were killed right then and there, you were one of the lucky ones. Those that were arrested were taken to Alexei's torture chambers for daring to lay hands on the czar. Huge groups were hanged at once. Others oh, were left to rot on gibbets alongside the road to Moscow. Tongues were ripped out. Some Ugh. were dismembered publicly. Ugh. You get oh, the picture. God. Get this. Even one guy that broke through, Alexei actually beat to death with the same scepter that Avon the Terrible used to beat oh. that one son of his to death. Oh, so, my God. That's fun. Right. Uh, There's I mean, a little symmetry in our story. So, okay, so the scepter's use, true use, is to beat people to death. <laughs> in Russia, it is. I mean, it's, let's, let's... It's a billy club. It's not a scepter. Uh, Good yeah. God. <laughs> so the copper riots shook Alexei. But good times are around the corner. So all this has happened. All this is terrible. We got some good stuff coming, though. After this incident, however, Alexei really, really begins to sour on his in-laws and the most influential family at court, the Miloslavsky clan. He is done with these people. I mean, he's, <sighs> those people have really caused him some problems. They really have. So finally, January 1667 sees the end of the war. Nashokin negotiates peace with Poland winning Smolensk, and for the time, Kiev. The Cossack Hetmanate was divided, or Hetmanate was divided into Poland and Russia, like divided between them. They split it kind of down the middle. Oh, okay. So finally, four centuries after the fall of Kievan Rus, the reconquest of Ukraine had begun in earnest. And as we know, that's going to be that's going to continue all the way to, to today. Today. It never does stop. So yeah. Nashokin was promoted to chief minister. Alexei was able to add czar of all the Russias to his title just in time for things to get really tense once more on the old home front. <laughs> March 1669, the 43-year-old Zarina Maria gave birth to her 13th child. Dear God, I'm so glad That's we don't live back 13 then. 13 kids. It's 13. But it is the unlucky number, after all, because yes. the child and Maria die soon after. Oh. So let's look a little at the succession. So Alex succession. Alexei had another Alexei, which was his heir. He oh had God. Theodore, who was no. really sickly. And then he had two very sickly toddlers, Simon and Yvonne. And oh, yes, God. there are a lot of sons, but they aren't exactly great stock for kings, if you catch my yeah. right. I mean, look at it. The look at the facts there, Jessica. He didn't really have much of a good choice of stock. He didn't good have a stock of the litter or litter, a good litter for boys. And you can't consider the girls whatsoever to be czar, even though they had a lot more girls. So, yeah, they're they're not thinking about that. That's definitely not something that they're considering. You're exactly right because then, even to to make things even worse, in 1617. Or in 1670, the heir Alexei, 1670 can't be right. Uh, no, that is right. The heir Alexei dies, leaving oh, only no. like the weaklings Weak to ones. inherit. Yeah. Exactly. Then immediately after that, toddler Simon also dies. Oh, Remember shit. that. Simon definitely dies. That's going mean, to be important shoot. here in right. just a second. Yeah. So this leaves us with sickly Theodore who's now okay. the heir, and the only other possible heir is the handicapped toddler, Yvonne. Oh, God. So it becomes imperative that Alexei marry again and make some more sons ASAP yep. because I knew it. no one's liking these odds. You're exactly bride right. show. Bride show's coming, isn't it? Woo! Oh, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> and this oh, time geez. around, this one definitely isn't a fair one. So there were really only two contenders despite the bride show and all the rigmarole. So the previous Zarina's family that was related to the current heirs, you know, like the current Theodore that's going to inherit his family is the Miloslavskis on the mother's mm-hmm. side. They start pushing hard for their pick for the new Zarina. However, the idiots accidentally sabotage their own girl, and Alexei turns his attention to the protege of his childhood friend, Matt Viv. Now wait, hold on. How did they how did they sabotage her? Oh, they try to write a bunch of letters that are delivered to Alexei that they meant to be targeting the their rival, but he takes it to mean the other girl that they're actually backing. Oh, oops. <laughs> Idiots. Idiots. Dummies. So this this girl that's the protege of his friend Matt Vive, this girl, Natalia Narshikina. Um, was kind of something the court had never seen before. Matt V's wife had heavily influenced the girl and her raising. Now, the wife's name was Mary Hamilton, and she was the daughter of a Scottish Catholic refugee from Puritan England, which was something the Russians were definitely not used to. Mm-hmm. Mary wasn't hidden away, of course, but well-educated, well-dressed, and free-spoken in a house full of all Western sophistication. Mm -hmm. There are actors, musicians, paintings, even mirrors. Remember, those are all banned for the Mm well-bred Russian women. Like, because some monk in the 16th century said they were full of demons. Yep. Mm -hmm. No, sir, that's just your own reflection. It's a very yep. good see you. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> so super hot Natalia Narvshkina was of this school of thought, basically. And Alexei chose to wed her in the end. But just as the wedding was about to take place, an army of runaway serfs and old believers start toward Moscow, led by a Cossack mercenary named Stenka Razin, 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 Razin. Let's go with that. Nonetheless, the Tsar decides to get hitched to Natalia anyway on January 22nd, 1671. And not only was she interesting and different from what he was used to, but the czar's eldest daughter was older than she was. Oh, shoot. Yeah, and boy, did this Miloslavsky daughters not care for their stepmommy. Not one little bit. Um, I'm going to say it was probably a little bit about jealousy as much as about family promotion. Alexi's daughters yeah. had been well-educated which was different. Alexei chose to do that. And they were very intelligent. But here the czar allowed his wife all these freedoms while they were to stay locked away in the Turin palace with like no mirrors or makeup. Um, Yeah. It can't be overstated though, in the end, how much the Miloslavskis resented the Narshinkas? Narshinkas. Yeah, uh-huh. Natalia's family, Narshinkas, and Matt Vive, her protege, or you know, her her sponsors, they yeah. resented the hell out of these people's presence on the scene because they were usurping all of their power. So in the meantime, mm-hmm. Alexi's celebrating the defeat of Rasin with a different ceremony. So Rasin was tortured on a platform in the Red Square. After Alexei just crushes this uprising. And Uh he was tortured in a way specified by Alexei. So this is like right after the wedding, this happens. He was whipped. His limbs were dislocated and forced Uh back into place. He was burning Uh with red hot iron. Cold water was dripped on his head, you know, one drop at a time. He was dismembered, quartered alive, beheaded, and then his innards fed to dogs while everybody watched in the Red Square. What a wedding gift, right? That's some hardcore, weird BDSM stuff happening. Like, 
That's some Jeff- Jeffrey Dahmer's perfect date night is what that <laughs> like, is. for real. <laughs> I love that. I mean, I don't love that, but yes. <laughs> uh, God, I know. So now there's really no doubt about who, who is czar and going to stay that way. But the legend of Rez- or Razin, Razin, Razin would plague the Romanov I see Razin. for years. <laughs> <laughs> I know it can't be that, but that's what I see also. <laughs> Basically, his little legend and all his doings are going to plague the Romanovs in the years to come. So there's a little Freddy hashtag, Freddy foreshadowing there for you. Mm-hmm. Um, but once this was done, everything began to change. This is the last really popular uprising. Everything's smooth sailing from here. Um, and not just because of military prowess, but also Alexi begins to change. The Tsarina's patron, Matt V, became the HBIC, while the two idiot Miloslavskis were sent to govern some rural province. So, mm. old wife's family is finally, they're being ousted one by one, and they are not taking kindly to it. Now, this also wasn't just because Alexi had grown tired of these people, either. Matt yes. V was actually competent. So, okay. steps in the right direction. Just oh, maybe the a wrong different. way about doing it. Yeah. And yeah. the wrong yeah. way about doing it. Yeah. You're exactly right. Wrong way about doing it. So, then on May 30th, 1672, Natalia pops out a very robust baby boy named Peter. Peter. Yes. yes. It's now. Peter. Now we see what's happening. Alexi there is, he is. Oh, there he is. He's made his first appearance on the scene. Alexi was so pleased that he pro- po- he promoted Natalia's father and her patron, Matt Beeve, to his main lords in waiting. Oh. So now, you know, the other family's getting real angry. Then yeah. the Ottomans. Yeah, but, inv- but hold, what? On. hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I get that they're getting angry, but their ticket in has died. And unfortunately, she did not produce. Uh, she produced a lot of children. It's not all about how many children you produce. It's about how many uh, stay alive. Exactly. And she do a very good job with that. So it's very ticket, much. I agree. In is, is now dead and gone. So it's like you can't be mad. You had your time. You didn't do anything with it. So quality Everyone's over quantity. exactly and then even if she'd have been gone this family had more than enough opportunity to make themselves useful but they were just bumbling idiots all along the way the Miloslavskis were were no help whatsoever so the reason why all the people were mad and and I mean they caused all these uprisings they were sucking on Nikon's titty. You know, they were just like all about all the wrong things. So all of these changes are being made. The Ottomans invade Poland where a bunch of Cossacks backed by the Ottomans start claiming to have the czar's dead son, Simon. Oh no. A false Dimitri. I mean, false Simon. Oh, no. Again, again, because he's being used as a rallying point against the Russians, which scares everyone as it's very time of troubles-ish, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, Alexei sends troops into the Ukraine post-haste, and the Cossacks immediately give up their false Simon. And then this false Simon is tortured in the Red Square, where his limbs are hacked off. And the body is impaled while still alive through the rectum. Oh, my God. You know what? They can't even just hang people anymore. They got to remove body parts and shove it up their poo hole. Like, what is happening here? I know. God, that was a great description. (laughs) (laughs) Agging off body parts and shoving it up poo holes. I mean, it's just like good gravy, man. Like, just... I miss, you know what I miss? I miss the good old days of just chopping off their heads and be done with it. I miss that. And I never thought I would say that. (laughs) To return to a simple beheading would just be magic. 
But like, no. I would be okay with that. I would too. <laughs> we can never just do we can never just behead somebody, apparently. God. Not in this story. No. No. But <laughs> it does make quite a statement. Um, because there's not gonna be any more false anything, let alone false Simons. I can promise you mm-hmm. that. Not when that happens. Oh, this this story has been so body count worthy. It really is. I wish we could have drank for this one, but alas, it is the way it is. Um, so <laughs> Alexi finesses around the whole Ottoman situation there in the in the West as he really starts to change things in Moscow. So okay. palaces are renovated, no doubt inspired by Louis the Sun King in France. Alexi is commissioning the first ever play in Moscow based mm-hmm. on his romance with Natalia. And crazier still, Natalia and the children were allowed to watch it through grills. Weird. <gasps> you didn't think she'd become some weird sex pest all of a sudden. He sure. enjoyed it so much that he built a theater and palace of amusement on the site of his for, of his former father-in-law, Miloslavsky's old palace. Boy, that's an <laughs> insult to injury. <laughs> and then this family I mean, into dwarves. I mean, think about it, though. Just like you get some prime putang and you start to turn around for the better. <laughs> that's exactly right. Now life is fun. I'm not just having to... Uh, 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 Produce 13... <laughs> Uh, not healthy children. I got one good. Yeah, I got I got one good one, and she is hot and fly, and I'm gonna do whatever she wants, and I'm gonna do better. Exactly. Suddenly, we're all having a good old time. Who know? Who know? Like I said, this family and freaking dwarves. He gives Natalia twenty two performing dwarves. Gone. Completely is the austere young monk of old. Alexi's finally loosened up and is having fun with it. You know, mm-hmm. what the months are now. Yeah. But more importantly, I'm important. not a regular czar. <laughs> I'm ah, a fun czar. <laughs> cool czar right? Super cool czar. Super so, cool. <laughs> I listen to the loot just like everybody else. Thank you very much. Oh. I'm I hear green is the rage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. I'm down with the homies. I know what's up, what's down, what's cool. <laughs> I know what's happening. I'm a part of this. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is Alexi enjoying himself, the court is finally allowed to relax and enjoy themselves for the first time in years. Zarina, Natalia was allowed to show her face in public. Then she goes out unveiled in an open carriage. She's popping out from behind the screens in church. Like, whoa, let's slow down. Baby steps here, people. We're having too much fun. Um, Alexi begins holding these massive parties at which he would out drink everyone. Now he is Thor. Now he's gone full Thor with it. Once you go Thor, you never go back. (laughs) Right? You just don't. You're just ready to Thor it up. It's Thor times now. Exactly. So, Fun had returned to Moscow with Natalia Nevshinka and her family of cultured, basically, backbone havers. They didn't just kowtow to the czar. They pulled their weight and then Natalia brings joy into this dead court. But amid, yeah. amid all this fun, little Peter was allowed to play away, have fun, and be seen. He wasn't locked away in a palace like all the other kids and like Alexi had been as a child. And yeah. man, was Peter a precocious child, kicking open doors to diplomatic receptions, running them up to Alexi and Natalia's delight. They loved oh, having the boy oh. around. That's adorable. That's adorable. They're, they're the they're the parents that let their kid run around the restaurant screaming, going, "Oh, isn't he just precious?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except for that kid's not a future, you know, czar or prince or anything. Although Peter's not going to be czar at this point. Nobody's thinking Peter. They will later. We'll yeah. get there. 
Um, so, you know, the czar and his young wife are visiting their pleasure palaces all the time. Meanwhile, little Peter's following around in like a miniature, small, gold encrusted carriage with like dwarves riding alongside oh on God. miniature horses. Jesus. Everything's just crazy and fun where we had no fun before. The young family is all about it, and they're all about spending their time together. This was something Moscow hadn't seen. No more monk crap. Alexei is finally living like a czar. Mm. Still, the enmity between the czar's former in-laws, the Milosovskis, and the Narsh... Er, Natalia's family. Narshinkas. Natalia's family. The <laughs> Narshinkas and Matt V was simmering all angry under the surface. You know, and Peter's mm-hmm. only four. It seemed unlikely, though, at the same time that Theodore would even outlive Alexei. But alas, he did. Alexei, only 47, fell ill. Oh. Yeah, and there's nothing for it because the czar was suffering from cardiac failure. Oh, there's no. nothing anybody can do. You know, that yeah. gets people today. So imagine back then you were really in trouble. Yeah. Uh, his heir, Theodore, was so ill, he had to be carried in on a stretcher into the death chamber to get his father's blessing and last bit of advice. And then Alexei was saddest to say goodbye to the young Serena Natalia, saying he never would have married her had he known that he wouldn't live much longer. Because oh. Alexei was legitimately afraid for Natalia because his love would no longer have his protection. Yeah. And Miloslavsky would ultimately be the czar. So on the 29th of January, 1676, Alexei Romanov I died. And as his widow and children are mourning the still warm body, the power struggles between the Milosovskis and the Narshinkas, Narshinkas mm-hmm. are really just beginning as everybody holds their breath and starts sharpening up their daggers. Oh, man. And that is Alexei Romanov the first. Uh, awesome. Wow. That wasn't as bad. Okay. Uh, it, it was a little, okay. Well, hold on. Let me try to figure out how I'm going to say this. <laughs> it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but I don't even know if that's the right way to say it because it was pretty freaking bad. <laughs> it was okay. pretty bad. I mean, we it dropped 20,000 in an army. We had. Endless mobs tortured and dismembering uh, and impaling. Yeah. This is a pretty bad one. <laughs> just, just, yeah, it was bad, but it wasn't actually as bad as I thought it was. For be. some reason, we start attacking Polish Jewish communities like we're Hitler. I mean, all kinds of stuff happens in this. No, no, no. He go, made my God. He made Hitler like look like a little biatch, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in, method, <laughs> I, in method, I would say yes. His methods were worse, but for just sheer power of numbers, Hitler really clipped him on yes, that one. <laughs> that is true. He did more numbers, whereas Alexei did more of a uh, statement. <laughs> well, Alexei's henchmen were really making a statement. You're right. You're yeah. right. It was, it was more statement <laughs> atrocities. It was like high-end fashion atrocities, whereas Hitler's were more an off-the-rack kind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tit for tat there. <laughs> he was Tomato, the first tomato. one, whereas <laughs> Alexei was really playing that Gucci game. So... <laughs> <laughs> he was in it to win it there. <laughs> he was in it to win it. God, I'm so tired. I for- This is hard to do, Dead Sober. It is. (laughs) My brain feels like it's mushed and not because I drank alcohol. (laughs) So I did all this research and my brain is mush. It really it's amazing how much the alcohol really helps it all go down. Because at one point I felt a little bile rise in my throat and I'm like, yeah, every week I get through this, you know, just fine. But it's because we drink. It's because we usually drink. And talking about this stuff isn't as bad. (laughs) 
<laughs> exactly. It comes really in your face when you have to talk about it sober. So because yeah. it's such a long episode, let's go ahead and wrap her up. Um, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Body Count Pod on both of those. Visit our website, www.bodycounthistorypod.com. I love how I included the W's. Like anybody really freaking needs that. <laughs> Let me go ahead and date myself. You know, I also remember cigarette lighters and cars. So there's two yes. things I've dated myself with. You can go and listen to all of the podcasts there. And we are also available everywhere that you stream podcasts. Please go check out our network and all of the podcasts we've got over there. So that is going to be bigheadsmedia.com and also at Big Heads Media on Twitter. Special mm-hmm. thank you to at Massive Late Fee. They make this entire show possible. So, again, thank you guys so much. You can find yes. me on Twitter and Instagram at Jessica B. Manor. Mm-hmm. Bethany, where do people find you? You can find me um, on Instagram, Bethany R N 24 And then on Twitter, you can find me at Bethany Skelton 5 That's the number five. Awesome. Like I said, we got big things coming down the pipe on Patreon. We got some fun stuff coming down the pipe that we're going to be throwing at you. We're going to talk about it all pew, pew, in. Pew, 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 pew. We're going to be pew, pew, in it at you later on in the next Ooh. couple of weeks. We promise we will be back to our drinky, drinky ways. I think we forgot to play yes. the curse game by the end of this, but it's okay. We're going to keep playing the curse game with each other. I don't have any more to add, Bethany. Did I get everything? I think so. I think we're good. We're solid. We'll see you all next week. Thanks for hanging with us, guys. Bye-bye.